We are doing great so far, learning and practicing a lot, making our code more and more sophisticated, which is wonderful. Along with the progress, we can observe that our code grows, making it hard to navigate and manage. A solution to this, using functions. Function is a named block of code. We can isolate a few lines of code and associate a name with it then call that function by using its name. An obvious benefit of using functions is organizing the code for better management and testing. What deserves to be a function? My personal rule, if it's two or more lines of code that need to be repeated at least two times, it needs to be a function. In addition, if the code becomes too lengthy and hard to navigate, it's best to make it a function, even if it needs to be executed only once. Furthermore, if you have a function that performs more than one task, split it into smaller functions, and then create another one that will call those individual ones. To declare a function, we simply use a keyword func before the function name, and we finish it off with parentheses and curly brackets to surround our block of code. Great, we can now organize our code better using functions, but what if we need to use the result of that function? Like the profit calculation for Jenny's categories, it's now hidden within the function. There is a solution to any problem. Functions may have what's called a return value. After executing the code within the function, it calculates a result and returns it to the line of code where we called our function. How do we know if the function returns something or not? By its declaration. If we require a result from a function, we must declare what type of the value a function is expected to return. And we place that type right before the curly brackets that surround the body of our function. It gets a bit more complicated to visualize. Let's put it in writing and see how it works in code. So let's experiment with functions. To declare one, we use a keyword func followed by the name of a function, any name we can come up with, then parentheses and curly brackets. And in between curly brackets, we enter a block of code or a set of instructions we want to execute as a part of our function. To have that block of code executed, we need to call a function. And calling it is done simply by typing a function's name followed by parentheses. And we can observe in console, we have our greeting printed. Speaking of our profit calculation for coffee, we can create a function for that as well. Coffee profit, declare variables for cost and price, calculate the profit, and print it out. To get that code executed, we must call our function. And here we are, we can observe the result. The profit for one portion of coffee is a dollar point two. As we can see, our profit calculation is now inside of a function. We can access it there, but we cannot access it outside of the function or outside of its scope. The scope of a variable is basically the context we declared it in. In our case, we declared it in a context of our function. Let's make a few examples. Say I declare a variable in a global scope. Then I can write some code and utilize this variable. Also, within this context of my if statement, I declared a new variable spy. I can use it no problem within that if statement. However, if I try to access it outside of that statement, I get an error because now my new spy variable is outside of the scope. Its scope was more local, it was within the if statement. Now let's look at a function example. We can declare a function, declare variables inside of that function, 
and utilize them within that function. We can also utilize variables that were declared outside of that function, but in the upper level of the declaration, such as global variable declaration, like our root variable. Just like before, we can also attempt using the spy variable within a function. However, it will generate an error because this variable is outside of the scope of this function. And if we go back to our global scope and try to utilize another spy variable, which we declared within a function, we are also going to get an error because this variable does not exist in our global scope. However, going back to our very first variable in our example root and trying to utilize that generates no errors and works perfectly fine because the root variable is within the general scope where we're trying to utilize it at the moment. So let's remove this experimental code and look at our function. We established that all the variables we declare within the function are available only to that function and not outside of it. And in our context, we need to deliver the result of our calculation, the profit, to the outside world somehow. To do that, we need to use a return value. Or we say we need to return it. A declaration of a function that needs to return something looks like this. It has two new elements comparing to previous declaration. First of all, we're indicating that this function is expected to return some result. And we are providing the type of the expected result, which is double in our case. And the second component is we're using a keyword return followed by the value we're intending to return. And of course, the type of the value or variable we are trying to return has to match the type we declared for return value. For example, if we declare that we need to return double, we cannot return a string. We get an error. The returned result of our function can be assigned to a variable and also incorporated in some output. Sometimes we work with a set of variables that are of different types. However, we need to utilize them in a single operation. But we know that single operation only works with variables of the same type. To overcome this constraint, we can temporarily present a value of one type as another. For example, if we want to calculate a sum of two numbers, one integer and one decimal, using direct numbers, we have no problem. And if we want to do the exact same thing but using variables, we get an error because we can't add two numbers of different types. We can overcome this constraint by temporarily presenting our x variable as double to match our y. And this is done by providing a type keyword in front of our variables and surrounding our variable in parentheses. And now we have a different error telling us that I already declared variable A. Let's remove that. And our code is perfectly fine. In this case, we'd like to keep our decimal value, but we can also choose to ignore it. And instead of changing the type of X, we can change the type of Y by presenting it as integer. And of course, that generates a different result. The return value of a function works the exact same way. Say we have a function to generate integer. And then try to utilize that function with a decimal number. As we can see, we get the exact same error. To correct that, we can make the result of our function that generates integer appear as double. I'm getting some more errors because I'm trying to redeclare variables with the same name. So let's remove that code. And here we go, no more errors. Now let's remove all our experimental code and go back to our profit profit calculation function. Instead of utilizing the result only within our function, we're going to return it to the outside world. 
So we need to specify the type of the return value, which is double in our case. And at the end of our calculation, simply return the variable profit. So we can also move out the print function and alter it to use the result of the function instead. Everything works great. Let's optimize our function a bit more. We technically don't need to declare a new variable just to hold our profit calculation before returning it. We can simply use this expression right after the return keyword. Knowing about how to use simple functions is very important, however, not quite enough to make significant improvements to our SmartBean project. We'll do that in the next chapter.